Nate, it's an absolute honor to have you on the podcast here as the VP of Manufacturing and Supply Chain to talk to me about how to be able to develop that multi-site improvement plan. So thank you. No, thank you so much for the invitation. I think that uh, it's it's great to be here. It's always a good uh, moment to do a self-reflection about like what we have achieved, but also like a good way to share yeah. uh, our journey. I think like every journey is unique, uh, and this turkey journey has been amazing through like this uh, multi-site uh, plan deployment. And I know you've been traveling a lot lately and, and very recent. So I, I caught you at like just the perfect time for the perfect topic, I feel like. Yes, so. it is like I, it's fresh of the oven. So it's like this year has been like a huge year for us. Yeah. Uh, you can imagine after like COVID, after yep. like limited travel and like being back to those international facilities. So this year I have visited the teams in, in China, visited like suppliers on the region, yeah. but also like spending time with the facilities in Europe, spending a couple of weeks in uh, Manchester, UK. Um, and then, of course, like visiting Mexico and then the locations of what happened in the U.S. Let's talk about goals and benefits first. So as you think about developing that multi-site improvement plan, what are maybe some of those bigger goals that you have in mind as you approach this topic? And then what are some of the expected outcomes and those big benefits? I will say like one word that I was if I if I need to describe that in one word will be standard. Mm. And I think like if uh, for us is we're making the same product in different locations. Right. So it is like for us, it's like when we develop this plan, it is like how do we define the Sturkey way in manufacturing? Right. Mm. So uh, for us, it was critical to making sure that we had a one way to do the products and it was a standard. The same in even Pretty, the same as in Mexico, the same in UK, in China. Yeah. And driving that consistency allows us to mm. basically deploy for the continuous improvement. When everyone is doing it slightly different, mm -hmm. you continue to have the challenge. Like if you improve in an area yep. and then you want to expand it to other locations, you have the challenge. Yeah. So going back to your question, I mean, the goals for us is like one, drive uh, a standard, mm -hmm. drive quality through a standard, mm -hmm. making sure that we have like quality at the source. And then, of course, a result of that, you will have a couple of things. You have the culture aspect. Mm -hmm. So people see the commitment that we have with the locations, but also you also have the, the portion of the productivity there activity side yeah so then uh some of the goals some of the, some of the benefits and uh you know the culture aspect ha has to come into play some of the other companies that i'll talk to i'll drop some names boston scientific medtronic for example they talk a lot about process harmonization that seems like a big fancy term for what are the standards and let's all build to the standards and have quality at the source is that is that you know maybe is that a term that you guys use at Starkey? This I process mean, harmonization. I, I I think that is a pretty cool term. It sounds uh, cool. I I like simple. Uh, yeah. I I really like like simple things like going back to the basics. Uh, for me, and I, and I think you'd hear me a couple times that I like good foundations, strong foundations, and mm. that for me is a standard. Yeah. Right. Harmonization for me is like the next level because mm. at the end, like once and and going back to like that change, right? Like. Um, let's think about like a wave of changes. Mm -hmm. Then what you want to do is like making sure that you harmonize like that. So yep. like I think that is yep. it is a good way to to yep. to use when you're more mature. Yeah. Uh, for us, yep. goal number one is making sure that we have like a global standard of mm -hmm. manufacturing. So what's required to have that glowing standard of manufacturing in order for that to be successful? Can you detail out or maybe some examples of what that standard looks like? Whether you want to take this from a, a site perspective, a department team or you know process or line perspective whatever perspective you want to look at that from i mean i, th I think that the step number one is defining what good looks like mm. um mm -hmm. i think like when we um and i will speak for like our side like with the size that we have and the the, the different locations that we have um of course that we have like created like a product that is really good and as we make custom products every single one of them is unique yeah right they always like talk about like this it's like a non-standard standard product there's no two ears that are the that same is not two ears so that by are default the like, that's they can be built closer in. but i mean they're not the same yeah so we, but we want to make sure everything inside is the same mm. so it is like changing or driving that mindset of like a custom made standard product for us was critical and then the second thing it was like making sure like that we went to the line level and mm -hmm. even define the way to opt optimize that Hmm. For us, even Pretty is our center for uh, center of excellence for manufacturing. Mm -hmm. Here's like what we define that what it looks like, and then after that, we deploy with the higher volumes locations that we have. Um, mm. And I think like the way to, to do it uh, here, it is like perfectly. Once we define what good looks like, mm -hmm. and we went through a couple of iterations, yep. then we were ready. 
mm. to improve that plan yep. based like uh, uh, on the improvements that we have in the feedback from the different facilities. So part of what you just shared, I think, ties into my next question for you in terms of what's the strategy to go after that multi-site improvement plan and defining what good looks like, defining what those standards are. You said go after the high-volume facilities. Yes. So tell me a little bit more about that decision and maybe some other alternatives to go after the, the low volume facilities first. What you know? What's the rhyme or reason there? I, I think that the with the multi site plan, the challenge it is like the same as the year. Not every not every site that is it's the same. Yeah. Every site will have like a unique factor, hmm. right? Like you can talk about like volume culture mm -hmm. uh, processes that mm -hmm. they have. Mm -hmm. So it is like it's it's basically like extending that, right? So we started. The product is the same. It's a matter of like units and potential. So mm -hmm. the reason that we started at, at HQ is because the talent and seniority that we have here. Okay, right? we got like our master uh, master technicians in Eden Pretty. Yep, they've been like with us for like several years. Like they have seen like thousands of years. Yep. So that's it's an important an important factor in how do we develop that standard. Mm -hmm. And then like when we stress that out mm. to a higher volume, that's what you can find. A little bit of the fine tuning. Oh. I always say, like running like ten, sometimes it's easy. Run hundred gets a little bit more interesting. Like run thousand, yeah. and then to see, like kind of like doing that stress, uh, stress test. Yep. To see where is it gonna break. Mm. So uh, our uh, bigger volume facilities have helped us to identify, yeah. like what are those stress points that we gotta like improve when we go into higher volume. Yeah. On the opposite side. When we go to like a smaller locations where we're also serving as uh, in the different countries, mm -hmm. it's also to identify what resources you have in house. Yep. Right. Like not everyone have the same resources that you scale down. Yep. That's where you gotta like basically adapt mm -hmm. on uh, the resources and the market that we get uh, on the strategy that we get in every market. So you just uh, came back from your trip to the UK. Yes. Tell me a little bit about how the UK facility or facilities. Uh, compare contrast to uh, Eden Prairie here in Minnesota HQ, uh, and how you had to ad maybe adapt based on resources. You know, because I know sometimes it's like, well, um, how uh, how deep is the bench strength? You know, do you have anyone else that has the 25 years experience? Maybe not. So you have to adapt in, in that way. Maybe. So can you can you walk me through how yep. those are different? And that's that's uh, that's awesome because like we we just went through this exercise with a with a facility. And I will start, I, I always uh, say that vulnerability is like a, a key factor for a leader. Say it again? Uh, be vulnerable. Vulnerability, yes. okay, yep. So about, we we try mm. in 2019. So this is our second attempt with the facility. Yeah. So I think like, uh, for Thanks me, for being open it's, about it's, it. It's important to say that not every time it will work. Yeah. So we, we try in UK in 2019. Um, COVID hit us. Mm. Um, yeah. Basically, like, grab our plan and put it in the trash can. <laughs> uh, so, and it was like, okay. So, it was a nice effort. We try. Life have different plans for us. <laughs> right. We came back for years later. Um, and then this time, we knew how to do it effectively. Mm. To your question, what we identify it is um, we do have a lot of tenure across the globe. Mm. The, the, the beauty uh, about it, something that we're super proud about it, that is people that is uh, with Sturk has been there for a long time. Hmm. We got a lot of like technicians that have been with us since the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, and UK is not the exception. UK has been more than uh, 40 years. Hmm. Um, so those have a lot of like knowledge about yeah. like how to make the product. Yeah. On the strategy of like how do we put the same plan of like lean manufacturing, um, how we do it is basically we bring people from the other facilities. Mm. So when we when like we, from Eden Prairie yes. to UK, you bring a team with you. Yes, you go, so ah. it's not a it's not a one man uh, ah, show. This. Yeah. So we uh, we took this as an opportunity also to basically uh, expose and basically like uh, uh, recognize that talent that we have in other facilities. So yep. for the team that was in UK, we basically had uh, a, a team leader, a supervisor from Eden Prairie that he basically runs the line every single day. Yep. We got a trainer. Uh, from Eden Prairie. Okay. We got a manufacturing engineer from mm -hmm. our facility in Matamoros, Mexico. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we have a lean guy from here. So nice. different skill set um, that basically covers the needs of that. So how do you make sure that that team, which seems like it's the dream team, is welcomed? I know in some cases, you know, some people will feel like lean is being done to them. 
and you have the best intentions in the world, but that's how it can come across. What have you done to make sure that team is welcomed? Two things. There is a lot of pre-work. Yeah. So even that, even before that we do an event, we do a lot of pre-work mm. in, in training with the people to making sure that they understand what we are, are doing there. Mm -hmm. Second thing is like when we landed uh, and we were about to kick off, uh, we hosted a town hall. Mm. Not only with the people that were going to participate in the event because it's a small team, like you get uh, 10 individuals, yep. but a town hall with everyone mm. to tell them why yep. we're here, like why this team from corporate is visiting us yeah. and like why are you guys going to do? So we set up expectations. We share with them, like, this is our plan. Mm -hmm. This is why we're doing it. This is why we only have a small group. Yeah. Please uh, be open. And if you see, like, if you want to get involved, do it. Yeah. Uh, and I got to say, like, I mean, like, even just restarting this project at the beginning, we didn't have any volunteers. Mm -hmm. uh, we always try, like, to see, like, um, the engagement that we get. So we say, hey, we're going to do this improvement. Who want to be part of it? Nice. And we didn't have any Get some volunteers. volunteers. No, oh, you didn't have it? Oh, no, shoot. No, no, no volunteers. So, but we got the talent. Um, the pretty cool part it is we spent two weeks. So I was, we were the like, full team for like two, two weeks, week and a half. Yeah. By the end of like week one, people were like, we get it. Mm. We, we, we understand. Some light bulbs going on. Yes. Nice. Like a ton of them. Yeah. Um, and then we start seeing the engagement. We start seeing like that commitment of the people. Yeah. Um, and that desire to be better. I always say like no one's want to be in a losing team. Mm -hmm. uh, but you also gotta make sure that you have the right leadership mm. and that you have a commitment with them. Mm -hmm. It's a two way street. Yeah. We cannot just ask them to be better without like giving the tools to be better. Right. Right. So I think like going back to your your question is how you do it. At, like when you're like showing up with this like a squad team yeah and then like you're gonna drop like this new process to them yeah because so, it could be intimidating for some too it could it could be limited and it was and and i think like we set up like the right space so people feel people trust yeah and people can like be open about it and and we always have like the comment about like i didn't believe that this was going to work yeah but i can see it now yeah. it's tangible for them so there's like and, and that's for for us and, and, and even a good validation, um, um, the CEO of the company is like today in UK. All right. And he was like, I haven't seen like these teams as engaged as we have them right now. And it's, again, it's a team with a lot of tenure, mm -hmm. uh, but it's a team with a lot of desire. I think like the, the what is amazing uh, for me is like, uh, which is great is we get a good purpose. Nice. Uh, the team have a purpose. Uh, the team cares about it and, and everyone lives a mission. So when you enable them, yeah, it's easy. So you got you know standards. You're you're working with some of the best of the best to find those standards. Then you take those standards and you start to share those. Collaborate with uh, other sites, high volume sites, and you do the stress test like you're talking about. Uh, and then as you worked with those teams and yeah, you help them, you know, reach the standards, uh, drive improvement. Great, you got one site, you know, done so to speak. I know the work's never really done, but. But you hit a milestone at yes. least, and, and yeah. maybe a little mini celebration in there too. It's important. But I also know that you've got you know roughly twenty sites. Mm -hmm. So then, is this is this process wash, rinse, repeat, or, or you know, and you're on a tour now for the next couple of years to be able to continue to get these standards from site to site to site? What what's the the back half look like, or you know, do, to what extent do you have a, a template that you can follow, and then you just make adjustments for culture to culture? Yeah, and I think like um, I, um, it's you gotta be mindful about like how much you can process, mm, right? Mm -hmm. um, of course, you want to hit everyone, but it's impossible. Um, and I think that it's important that like recognize um, those like business objectives. Mm. We have a plan for the next the next three to five years. Yeah, we know what sites are we gonna be hitting, mm. and then in the meantime, there are like key best practices that we're sharing with yeah. the small location so they can also start the journey. Cool. So by the time that we hit them, um, uh, after like the, the, the main objectives, then they're, we're not starting, uh, starting from like zero. Mm. So like, I think like the key for us is like making sure that we are fitting those improvements. Mm -hmm. So everyone is starting to get aware about like this. So multi-site, multi-year plan, 
This isn't going to happen in six months, no. especially with your size organization. So there's some serious commitment. Can you share one of those um, one of those uh, key outcomes you mentioned? There's a few of those. Is there is it like you know a, a smart goal at the highest level that maybe you're pointing everything back to? I would expect. Can you share one of those? Or? Yeah, I mean we we we're seeing like different aspects. If you're looking for like um, hard data, hard numbers, results. I mean we're. Seeing... I'm so used to like what's on time delivery. Yep. You know what's Don't our safety metrics. Yes. I'm so used to that's you know this SQCD stuff. Is, yep. is, is it tie back to those? It or? is type of yes, it's type of both. So it's like we're seeing like between like 25 to 30 percent like increase okay. in productivity. Yeah. Um, we're seeing like uh, increases on on time delivery. Um, I always talk about like the the sustaining portion about it, yes. which is key for us, and that's where like our metrics basically speak for the process that we're doing. Um, mm. Eating Pretty um, holds ninety five percent on time delivery over the last two years and a half. All right, so it is like and it's like it, it's there, like it's constant, and we know like if we deviate like below the ninety five, like we know how do we get like back like uh, yep. um, really fast. Yeah. Um, so we're doing constantly problem solving. Uh, but to your question, um, we're seeing like that improvement of like between 25, 30% nice. um, just by doing like that, imp that implementation. Mm. Um, and of course, like the benefit on that, it's the on-time delivery. Of course, you see like quality. Mm -hmm. We're seeing a reduction in internal work uh, mm -hmm. between like five to 6%. Mm -hmm. So we, we're seeing improvements on those. Um, and then the, the people side, I mean, um, yeah. we cannot forget about like the people side. I mean, we, the level of engagement that you get out of a location yeah. after doing this it's amazing. I Love mean, it. like, I mean, it, it's kind of like um, uh, injecting a shot of energy, <laughs> and then like just like give them like that extra boost yeah. in making sure that we keep driving changes. Love it. Yeah, yeah. We do a, a lot of meetings, a lot of training around here, and oftentimes we have uh, caffeine and sugar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> People are ready to go at seven in the morning. That's so like it's, a double it's, it's a shot in the arm. Yeah, yep. that's good. So then, but the shot in the arm. You know, like even for us on training, unfortunately, doesn't last. What does last is, you know, for us, people that have legitimately solved a problem and they're like, and I want to keep it this way. Yep. Any other tips for listeners about, you know, the sustainment component as you kind of, you know, go from site to site, you also leave site to site. What else can you do to make it last? Leadership. Yeah. Leadership is a key factor. Mm -hmm. um, if there is no commitment from the leadership, Hmm. This will fall apart. Yeah. Um, and it's key to making sure that we have the right leaders hmm. with the right tools. Um, having that commitment from like the leaders help us to to making sure that people trust us. Hmm. Um, we always talk about like trust, but it's important the same way that we trust our employees that they trust us. Hmm. And the only way to enable that is basically to making sure mm -hmm. that like we keep a high stable ratio Love on that. like the things that we say that we're gonna improve. Hey, this is our plan for the next 12 months. This is where we want to improve. And this, then this is a commitment of the investments that we're gonna do this. Yeah, love that. Absolutely love that. That high say to ratio. Yes. That's good. That's really good. Anything else that you think could make this whole plan fall apart? That people should just watch out for. Any other like you know, you know, as part of maybe an after action review, you thought, like, gosh, you know, this would be the one thing that we might tweak as we continue down this path. Or a statement plan. Um, we we know that when you're like, and you say right, like when you're in a training, when you're in an event, you get the adrenaline, you get like that emotion going through, and it's like everyone is on board. Yep. How do we make sure that we have the right indicators after uh, hmm. the event? Okay. So for us, the 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 critical part after like we do the event is the first twelve weeks. Mm. For twelve weeks, we look at like our metrics and we're making sure that we're hitting the goals. Mm. If by twelve weeks we sustain, we can close the event. Okay. Otherwise, we basically like review and identify what needs to be done. Gotcha. So um, it's this is the twelve weeks is like kind of like a latest way because we started in different options like in sustainment yep. and and I think like the the twelve weeks had has proved hmm. that it's like long enough like where we can make drive further changes to making sure that it stays. It's yep. also to help us to identify um, again going back to the leaders. Do we have the right people? Is there anything else that we get invest yep. uh, to making sure that we get this? That's good. Yeah, improvement. It's not just an act. It's got to be a habit. You gotta be, it's got to be part <coughs> for at least of the twelve culture. weeks minimum. <laughs> it's got to be a part of the culture. I mean, like uh, the the um, the end goal of this is like making sure that like doing the right thing 
And the easiest thing to do is the right thing to do. Right. So it's like making sure that you have that culture embedded. So you want to like have like a uh, problem solving and a rapid problem solving mm -hmm. uh, in the facility as part of the culture of continuous improvement. You've got about 20 sites. Anything you would uh, change or modify about how you've gone about it if you had uh, 220 sites? Oof. I don't think that I would modify something specific about like going from 20 to 200. You know, it's going to take more time. It's going to take more teams. Resources, uh, team. the strategy will be different, of course. Like, right. I mean, taking the assumption that you have like that many signs, like you would have access maybe to other resources. Yeah. But I think like key is, is, um, is how do we identify like talent in those locations, mm. right? Like, so, um, by being in the corporate in the in the headquarters, mm -hmm. it's easy to know the people. Is like how do you identify those partners mm -hmm. on those international facilities so you can be more agile in that. Mm. We don't need to be in every single one of them, mm -hmm. but like, and that's what we're like. We're trying to like enable people on the regions to like participate on the event. So um, mm -hmm. in some of the events, we're bringing someone from Latam. Yep. Hey, like you can maybe help us to lead this through Latam to the smaller locations. Yeah. So we will expand that. Um, right now, for us, it is. Um, it's a matter of like uh, aligning resources and priorities. Mm -hmm. But if I were to have like those 200 locations, yep. for sure, like enable the regional teams, enable mm -hmm. like the local talent on those and those facilities, mm -hmm. and and follow a model like uh, train the trainer. Right? Ah, yep. So it is like with train the trainer, like you can do a way like perfect, like you can you can bring the talent and show them like how we're doing one, yep, and then perfectly like like give the tools so they can facilitate mm -hmm. on those like uh, different scales. Yeah. Tell, show, do, review, mm -hmm. repeat. Yes. Yeah. Accelerate. Very good. Very good. Well, Nate, this is a ton of fun. Thanks for letting me pick your brain about how to develop this multi-site improvement plan. Thank you. No, thanks so much. It was great. I mean, it was perfect timing with all the travel uh, and then right after like this event and, and just like um, uh, cheering. I, need, I think that for us, um, the same way that as, as we chair, we learned a ton. Uh, by a podcast like yours. So it's pretty. Thank you for the invitation. It's an honor. Yeah, appreciate the generosity. All right, I got three more questions for you here. So switching gears a little bit here. Okay. Want to ask you about, um, want to ask you about uh, your pet peeve. Do you have uh, a leadership <laughs> pet peeve? What what drives you nuts? A low say do. Oh, I should have guessed like, it. It's like, I think that, yes. I mean, like for me, it is like you talking about back that up with action. Was like, I, I'm a big passion uh, uh, about that. It is just like people uh, that don't execute what we say, like like yep. that, like accountability, like he's one of like my pet tips. Yeah, yeah. All this and yes. and all this, not, action, not helpful. So. What about advice to your younger self? What would you say? Get out of your comfort zone. Um, mm. um, um, be open to mistakes, but uh, own them. I think like the biggest, the biggest uh, advice for myself would be like own those mm. those mistakes, um, and then like pivot quickly on the improvement. So um, that would get you out of the comfort zone, and that's where like the better things grow. Yeah, that's good. That's really good. So what's one skill that every great leader should have? Um, I will say um, communication. Hmm. Be able to communicate with your team will facilitate a lot of like the projects mm -hmm. um, that you're going to do. Hmm. And even on the day to day, I will say like 90% of the problems are related to communication. Mm -hmm. So having that ability to clearly communicate with your team, with your peers, um, it's, it's key. Yeah. It would allow you to achieve uh, results in a faster, better, uh, better way. That's so good. I mean, we all want to win. We, you know, we all want to do a good job. We just got to know what it, it is sometimes, right? Yeah. And Leaders got to communicate that. That's the thing. Like, I think that everyone have a good intentions. Um, the good, the, w the challenge is like, how do we communicate to understand? Like, how do we work together? Yeah. One, once you have that communication part, um, really uh, will work. Mm for sure you can like move a little bit faster. Yeah. Well, again, ton of fun. Thanks for letting me pick your brain on developing a multi-site improvement plan and learn a little bit more about you and, and some of these leadership questions. So no. thanks again. Thank you so much. What's an honor. Appreciate it.